guys. This is a film camera Q&A. Film camera tour. I have all my film cameras here. I asked you guys on my Instagram to ask me any film related questions. So that is where I'm getting all these questions from. Before we get into the questions, I'm going to give a little film camera tour just to kind of set the basics of like what I use and what I like, what I don't like. First up, it's actually over here. This is what I'm currently shooting with right now. It's a Pentax 35 millimeter point and shoot. I have a roll of Kodak gold in here. This is from Europe. I haven't gotten anything developed because it started to break down. So then the other camera I'm shooting with right now is this Minolta. I got this from my parents' best friend, Jen. Shout out, Jen. It actually already has a black and white roll in here from whenever she found it. I love this camera right now. It has an interchangeable lens. So I have a like big zoom lens to go on it. I also have little, I haven't figured out how to get them on yet, but lens filters for this camera. So those are the two cameras I'm currently shooting with. I'm just gonna grab one. This is my underwater film camera that sadly broke. A lot of these cameras have broke. So this is a Minolta point and shoot. It's a more difficult camera to take pictures with because you can't like look through it and like frame your shots essentially. So the pictures that I have from it are kind of just all over the place. We found this in my grandma's basement. Most of these cameras I have been given to from friends or I just found them like my dad had a lot of cameras. So that is where I got most of my cameras from. This is a Minolta point and shoot. Essentially the same thing as my Pentax. Honestly, I think I only got to shoot like one roll of film on this before it broke. I don't know if it was just user error, but a lot of my Pentax and Minolta point and shoots tend to break fairly quickly. Going along with the point and shoots again, this is a Pentax 35 millimeter point and shoot. This was my favorite camera. I like that it's gold. It's no different than that one or my other Minolta just because I feel like all point and shoots kind of tend to look the same, especially like the Minolta Pentax brands. Next. This was my first ever film camera. It's a manual camera. It's a Minolta. I got this on Amazon, used on Amazon, I guess. Doesn't work. So <laughs> I shot an entire roll in Hawaii on this and I went to like get it developed and they were like, there's nothing on this roll. It does not work. If you're getting a film camera, make sure it's tested and it works before you buy it. This is my favorite camera I've ever had. I got this for like $30 at a random film store in Michigan. The guy working at the store told me that there was only a couple of this camera made. I don't know why. And they were really expensive when they came out. So the fact that I got this working for $30 was absurd. Some of my favorite pictures were taken on this camera. I love the depth that it has and the way that it makes the colors look. It's so beautiful. Unfortunately, I broke this camera because I took it to the beach. So careful taking your film cameras the beach especially if they're nice because just one tiny grain of sand will literally destroy the whole thing i took it to like three different film stores to see if they could fix it and they also the same thing like once a little grain of sand got in this it was over side note i'm editing but last night i literally found this exact camera on facebook marketplace i was literally just scrolling and then i came across it and i was like my prayers have been answered and i'm getting my favorite camera for the same price. It was $40. It literally should get here today. And I'm so excited to finally have this camera in my hands again. Anyways, I just wanted to tell you the good news. Back to the video. This is another Pentax. I only used one roll in here and it got light leaked. So like the film got exposed to light because I had to open it up because the roll wouldn't like roll up. So I had to have someone at the film store manually do it, which led to light leak. As for digital cameras, these are the two that I use to film. I use this one to take pictures. It's my dad's old Canon PowerShot. I love this camera. It's so cute. It has the cutest, hey, it has the cutest footage. Such a good zoom, as you can see. The pictures are really cute on this. I brought this with me when I went to Europe and my friend Yulia used it like the whole time. She got the cutest clips, the cutest pictures. That's a cool one. I don't know, but they're really nice. Where are we going? Portugal. True. <laughs> I need gum. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> what are you drinking? Tea. Oh my god, ice cream. I think I filmed that, but we didn't lose our baggage. No way. I love the look of this camera and everyone will always ask me, where did you buy that? It was my dad's, you guys. Go ask your parents. They probably have 
tons of these laying around. I feel like every parent in the 2000s had some sort of digital camera. That goes along with this one. This is my other digital camera that I'll use a lot of the time. It's a Sony. Oh, it's a Samsung. I brought this to Italy with me like two summers ago and I filmed a lot on there. I love the look of this as well. It's a little more grainy than this one, but nonetheless, it's so cute. It gives you that cute little, you know, like vintage look. Again, took this from my dad, found a battery charger on Amazon. The rest is history. So these are my two digital cameras that I will use and take everywhere. For the video, I have two Super 8 millimeter film cameras. This is one of them. I've never used it. It's my dad's. My dad would literally film my childhood on this thing. Here's the Halloween kids. Let me see. Pretty girl, Sharpay, and a princess. I said to get a shot of the slumber party before everybody is with me. Goes to bed, five seconds, right? Watching Kit Kit Rich. Watching this footage makes me so grateful for mm -hmm. these cameras and for my dad for filming everything. His Great love boy. for film definitely passed down to me. The bus is here. It's so special to watch, which is something so beautiful about these camcorders. This is the Super 8 that I used to film this video. I got this as a gift. It is literally my favorite thing ever. I've always wanted a Super 8 camera. This just like shoots so beautifully. I literally cried when I saw this footage for the first time. I'm kind of nervous. My first time using this. Uh-oh. I have a lot of film left. Looks like I need to go shoot some stuff. Right now I have a Kodak Gold like 8mm film in here. Looks like this. I think it shoots like at least 10 minutes of footage. I could be wrong. I'm not quite sure. I think I under filmed last time so I only had like 5 minutes worth of footage maybe give or take. So like I said it's kind of just expensive to keep up with 8mm. Personally I think it'd be great for like a wedding scenario or like an event you really want to remember but for just daily like fun shooting I think it's kind of expensive but that's my opinion. I do love how this looks. I love how special like the memories are. It captures moments the way that you see them in your head. So that's a really special quality about this that I don't think that you can get on digital footage. Now that the tour is done, let's get into the questions. Guys, I have to put my hair up. How hot is it today? 90 degrees and I'm wearing a sweater. I'm wearing a granny sweater. Much better. Okay, first question. Best places to buy a film camera. I personally have gotten a lot of these from either family family members or friends. My suggestion is just to ask your friends or family if they have any old film cameras that they're not using because chances are they probably do somewhere in their basement or in an attic. If not, I will go to film stores. That is where I would get a lot of mine. They're more expensive at film stores. For example, I got this Pentax at a film store in Hawaii and it was like 120. So it's definitely way more expensive. I guess it just depends because this I got from a film store and it was 40 and this I got and it was 120. So it depends on the city that you're in and just the kind of film camera it is But a lot of good places to check is eBay and make sure that they're like tested and approved I did get a film camera for my friend off Depop and I think it was only like 60 bucks on Depop So that's another place I guess you just have to check and make sure that they're trustworthy before you buy them You want to make sure that they work otherwise you just bought something for no reason. Recommendation of a film camera for a beginner. I would say either a Pentax or a Minolta point and shoot just because they're so simple. They still look more professional, I guess I would say, versus a disposable camera. And they're very easy to work with. They don't have a lot of problems. I know I said like, oh, my broke, but that's just because I didn't take proper care. But I would say either a Pentax or a Minolta point and shoot. I feel like they're the most common to come by. I know that Olympus point and shoots are really, really good too, but those are more expensive expensive because more people want them. So I would say a Minolta or a Pentax is probably equal to the Olympus. Where do you get your film developed? I get my film developed at a place in Michigan called Height Photo Lab. There's two locations. They're like 10 minutes from each other and they get developed in a day. So, and then they send me my digital copy. I don't usually get the physical like printed photos just because I don't know. I don't really care to have them so I get them scanned and then sent via email so that's where I go look up in your area like 24 hour film developing or something like that and places will probably come up if they do 24 hour they're probably fairly good I went to Walgreens to get my film developed they sucked 
They really did. They took like three weeks. All my photos were like really dark, really underexposed, and the colors were just not good. So I would say like CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid. I don't know if Rite Aid developed some, but places like that I would not trust to get my film developed because they don't really know what they're doing, I guess, versus like a film store where they know more about film. They know what it's supposed to look like. They know how to develop it properly and they'll do it faster. So I would go to a film store over a commercial like Rite Aid whatever that place to get my film developed. And then I got my Super 8 film developed at Pro 8 millimeter. I sent it in and then they just emailed me my footage back. So that's another great place. They did such a good job. The turnaround was so quick and the footage looked amazing. How long have you been shooting slash how did you get into it? I don't even know what sparked it. I think I just wanted a film camera. I think I saw my friends had some and I was like, I want one. And so I bought that manual camera off Amazon. Didn't work, I was really sad. And then my friend, he gifted me my first camera, which is a Pentax point and shoot. I absolutely fell in love with it. I was going through like three rolls a week. I felt like I was just constantly shooting everything. I just liked the look of that versus my phone. And it also was less stress to take film. Like it felt more creative versus like your phone where you have multiple chances to like take a photo and like pose it and make it not genuine versus film where like you took it and that was the photo and like everything looked more natural and captured more of the moment how it looked in my head versus like a phone picture where it's like okay that's kind of staged and that's kind of fake so i really love the feeling of like getting film pictures back and like looking at a picture and being like that's how i remember it like that's what it felt like to me and so i kind of got like addicted to it what is a film role you recommend honestly i think that you can shoot with any roll of film and it will still look good my favorite go-to all the time is kodak gold it's more like warm toned i don't know that's the only way i can describe it is warm and golden -y. i've used fuji film it's not my favorite favorite but it's the cheapest so I sometimes when I'm in a crunch will get that because it's more common to find that. I do love portrait film but that is expensive and harder to come by so when I do use that it's like for special occasions I've only used like one or two rolls of that. Sometimes I'll grab like random ones from a film store if I see them just like sitting out I'm like oh that looks fun I'll grab it but for the most part I always stick to Kodak Gold. A lot of you asked how to take film through TSA. I don't know if I'm just uneducated but I've never had a problem. Like this camera for example I literally took all around Europe with me. I never took it out to go through TSA. I always just kept it in my bag. I've always kept my film in this little thing. Like even my Super 8, I have never taken it out of my bag or asked to not go through TSA with it. So I've never had a problem with it. My film's always turned out looking fine. I don't know if that's just like my luck or what, but I think if it's under a certain ISO that it can't go through and most film is above that ISO level. So it's good to go through TSA. But I know there are like bags that you you can get to put your film in when you travel that will protect them from the radiation but i've never had a problem with it don't take my word for it if something happens it's not my fault i'm just uneducated please do you use flash all the time for film honestly yes i do i think that it makes it look more crisp the photos that i don't use flash for end up being a little noisier and have not as much depth to the photo so i usually always have my flash on just because i like the way that it looks better and it's brighter and colors pop and yeah but it's totally up to your personal opinion whether you want flash or not this is a question that like doesn't even need answering but i'm going to talk about it anyway does it take practice or is it easy to take good film photos i think that every that's this is another reason why i love film is because there's no such thing as a bad photo yes i've taken pictures that are like a little questionable and aren't the best but i don't think that it's necessarily a bad photo that's why i love shooting film because there's no mistakes in it because it's Art. like there's no mistakes in art. I think that you don't have to be a photographer or be good at something, especially film, to do it. That's just a perk of film is the way that it looks just makes it already better than like an iPhone photo or like a digital photo just because it's timeless. So it can't necessarily be bad. Like when I look at my film photos, I think of like my parents' photos that are on film and I'm like, oh, those look so cool and so good because they weren't necessarily trying to make them good. They just ended up good because it captured a specific memory in a specific moment that was like special to them. So I don't think it's possible for it to be bad if you're capturing the happy moment. Is it worth getting a legit film camera or disposables just as good? I think it's always worth it to get a film camera. You will have it way longer. It'll be in the long run, a little cheaper because you're not gonna have to keep buying disposable after disposable like you'll have a set camera and you'll establish your film look versus like a disposable you don't have a lot of room to grow or learn or anything because it's just like this is what it looks like this is the film you're using that's it 
versus a film camera where you can kind of have a little more freedom in choosing what settings you want or what kind of role you want to use and it's more fun. So I would recommend getting a film camera. Clearly, I have so many, so I love them. I've only used this disposable like once or twice and I did not like it. So biased opinion, get the film camera. This is off topic to film, but someone asked what camera I use to vlog on. I'm currently using the Sony ZV-E1 and I have a wide angle lens on it. So I think it's an 18 to, or no, a 10 to 20 millimeter lens. I love it. I love this lens. I used to use the Canon M50 and that just had like a 16 to 24 millimeter lens. Going along with film cameras and vlogging, someone asked how do you manage storage? I don't. I really don't. I'm working on that. I have a lot of storage on my computer so that's an amazing plus but I just got a hard drive so I've been putting all of my extra footage on there just to free up my iCloud space and my computer space so I would suggest getting a hard drive, storing everything on there so then you can edit on your computer, you can kind of manage it better. So I feel like I'm forgetting something. So if you have any more questions, comment them, DM me, I'll answer. I had a couple questions about how I edit my videos. So if you want me to make a how I edit my videos video, let me know. Send me your film photos so we can all look at them together. And that's it for my film camera tour slash Q&A. Hope you enjoyed. Go get a film camera. If you can find a cheap one, don't spend a lot of money or spend a lot of money if you want. See you guys so soon. Love you. Oh, my nails are chipped. Love you. Bye. One last thing before the video ends. I just got really nostalgic and really grateful editing this video, getting to see all these old memories. This is your sign, go get a camera and start documenting your life because there's so many beautiful things to see, so many beautiful things to capture and you have yet to even experience some of your greatest memories yet. So go get a film camera. Okay, love you, bye. Ugh. This is me trying to film a thumbnail right now. I'm sweating. Not for the week, apparently. I keep hitting record instead of picture. Oh my. I did it again. I think I got the shot. All right. <laughs> Talk soon. Love you.